We are on 1.7 range drives and do seem perimeter circumference and area. Once you go ahead and do your warm up like you normally would have done, uh, write it on the sheet of paper. Make sure your name's on it, your class, and the date. I want you to write out, find the distance between the coordinates 3, 1, and 3, negative 5. And we're going to do it as a class, so it's an easy one point as long as you can keep up with your paper. Remember the distance formula is D equals the square root of X2, those are just subscripts telling you that there's two X's, X1, you're subtracting them, taking and then squaring that answer. It will be positive once you square it. Plus the change in your Y, Y2 minus Y1. And again, you're going to square those after you subtract them. And again, it will be positive. Add them together, then take the square root. All right, so our points are 3, 1, 3, negative 5. That's an X, and that's a Y, X, and a Y. Okay, now I'm going to give these subscripts 1. They're the first ones, these are my second ones. And then I just substitute them into the formula. D equals, don't forget your square root symbol. All right, your X2, which is 3, minus your X1, which is 3. You're going to square that answer plus your y values. Negative 5 minus the 1, square that answer. So you've got negative 3 minus 3 is 0 squared. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 squared. You get 0. Negative 6 squared is 36. This one happens to come out nice and pretty because 0 plus 36 is 36. The square root is 36. Remember, when you do the square root of a number, you get both positive and negative. But we only are interested in the positive because we're talking about distance. All right. A regular polygon. When you hear the word regular, Right, regular means that all the sides are congruent. All the sides are the same length. All the angles are congruent. All the interior angles of the picture or the figure are congruent. Convex polygon, one that has connected and you can't um, go outside the figure if you're drawing diagonals to the corners. So here's a polygon, a triangle with a polygon. These are the ones we're going to deal with, triangle, square, rectangle. They're regular if all the angles are the same and all the sides are the same. Now, a triangle, the sides don't have to be the same, but they can be. On a square, all the sides are going to be the same. A square is a regular polygon. Okay. Now, a rectangle is not going to be a regular polygon because although the angles are all equal, the sides are not. You've got two different side lengths. Now, perimeter is adding up all the sides, the length of all the sides. So on a triangle, you're going to have to add up all three sides. On a square, you add up all four sides. Now, luckily, on a square, all four sides are equal. So you could just do four times that side length. A rectangle, you're adding up all four sides. But again, two sets of the sides are the same. So you could do this shorter formula, 2 times length plus 2 times the width for the perimeter. Now, area includes everything inside of the figure, okay? Everything inside of that whole area inside. So area of a triangle is 1 half or 0.5 times the height. Now, the height in a triangle has to be going from a vertex point straight down, make it a 90 degree angle. That is where you see this one. The height is not the edge on this triangle, not can be, but it has to go straight down from the vertex point and create a 90 degree angle, a little box here. Straight down from the vertex point, 
at a 90 degree angle times the base of the figure. Now, wherever that 90 degree angle is, that's your base. Area of a square is length times width, but because all the length and the width are the same, you can do just the side length squared. A rectangle is also length times width. All right, now we're moving on to circles. These are properties of circles or definitions that can um, pertain to a circle. A circle is the locus of all points in a plane equal distance from a given point called the center. All right, no matter where or what I draw, I'm going to draw a circle. And you notice it's got a point in the center when I'm drawing it. No matter how far I draw my circle, all the round edges, it's not really an edge, all the roundness of the circle are all the same distance from that center. All right, the diameter goes through the center of the circle. So remember seeing the center? The diameter is going to go straight through the center of the circle. All right, and it has endpoints on the circle, so therefore it is also a chord. A radius just goes from the center of the circle and touches one of the end points on the circle. This other end point is on the circle. And there are tons, infinitely many radii, that's plural for radius, radii on a circle. I can draw them all over. And they'll have the same length. Radius is from the center of the circle, and it, the other endpoint ends on the circle. Now, the circumference of a circle is like the perimeter of a polygon. Okay, it's got the straight edges. Circumference is the distance around the circle. The problem is it's not edges. It's a rounded object, right? So you need to have something that represents the rounded object, and that's usually pi. So you can use either formula according to what's given to you. You can use circumference equals pi times the diameter, or you can use circumference equals 2 times pi times r. Now remember up here, you saw it, the diameter is always twice the length of the radius. That's why you could either use d in the circumference or 2 times r, because they mean the same thing. Diameter is 2 times the radius. Formula for area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So you square the radius, and then you multiply by pi. Square the radius, then multiply by pi to find the area of a circle. To find the perimeter and area of a rectangle of a length of 4.5 meters and a width of 0.5 meters. So in other words, you can draw yourself a little rectangle. We know rectangles have 90 degree angles. All right. The length is 4.5 meters. The width is 0.5 meters. Now, in perimeter, your unit of measure is just in meters. If you're doing area, it's going to be squared meters, meters with a little 2 above it. All right, perimeter. Remember, we can add up all the sides. If this is 0.5, then this side is also 0.5. If this is 4.5, then this side over here is 4.5. So you could add up all the sides, or you can use the formula, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Either one is correct. I do not care which one you do as long as you show me your work. So 2 times 4.5 plus 2 times 0.5. So 2 times 4.5 is 9. 2 times 0.5 is 1. So you get 10. Don't forget your measurement, your unit, meters. So the perimeter is 10 meters. When you're dealing with geometry, I will count off if you don't keep your unit a measure along with your actual number that you had found. It makes a difference. I'm not sure if you're talking about 10 meters, 10 inches, 10 feet. 
You must have your unit of measure. I will count off. All right, so on this one, we're going to find the diameter, radius, and circumference. So now I'm dealing with the circle. And the area of the circle, that is two feet high. Okay, the circle is two feet high. Use 3.14 as approximation for pi. If your homework, notes, book, whatever, tells you to do 3.14, use it. If it does not, use the pi symbol in your calculator, which you can find by hitting second in the area key. All right? And that gives you pi. But use 3.14 if it tells you to, because that, they want you to round. Otherwise, use pi and don't round. All right, so let's draw our figure. We've got a circle, and it says it's two meters high. So from top to bottom, it's two feet, excuse me, two feet. Now, what is that? Radius, circumference, diameter, right. It's a diameter. All right, so if that's my diameter, the diameter is two feet. Okay, the diameter is two feet. So now I can use, we found the first part. Radius, remember, diameter is two times the radius. So the radius is half the diameter. Radius is half of two. What's half of two? One. Good. One foot. Don't forget your unit of measure. Circumference. Remember, we can use the circumference formula, um, 2 times pi times r, or you can use the circumference formula, pi times the diameter. Remember, 2 times r is the diameter. We've already got the diameter, so 2 times pi, which remember they tell me to use 3.14, One four. So two times three point one four, and that gives me six point two eight what? All right feet. Don't forget your unit of measure. So now we've got diameter, radius, circumference. Now we need to find area. Now remember, area is pi times the radius squared. So area equals pi. The radius was 1 squared. What's 1 squared? Anybody? Right, it's 1. So 1 times pi, which they tell me to use what for pi? 3.14. So 3.14 times the radius, or the 1 squared, which is 1. My answer is 3.14. Now, what did I say about the units for area? Area is always squared feet, but you write it like this, feet with a little two above it. Area is always your unit of measure with a little square above it. It's called squared, meters squared, feet squared, inches. Everything else so far is just the unit. All right, so this one wants to find the area and the perimeter of a triangle. So let's graph the triangle to get a kind of a view of what we're talking about, what we're doing. So we're going to find the area and perimeter of the triangle. H is located at negative 2, positive 2, which is H. J is located at 3, negative 1. K is located at negative 2, negative 4. Now, if you notice, what kind of triangle do we have here? Anybody know? Maybe not. It's not a right triangle, is it? Because you don't have a 90 degree angle. Good. So, let's look. I can take one vertex and go straight down. Now, this is not going down, it's going sideways. That's okay. Because you see I made a 90 degree angle. From the vertex straight down, made a 90 degree angle. I can use this graph to count out how long it is from H to K. One, two, three, four, five, six units from H to K. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six. You don't count the one you start on. You count the one that you finish on. 
So it's six units from H to K. How far is it from the height that we just looked up? So we start in the, the red one. We don't count it. We move one over. One, two, three, four, five. The height of this triangle is five units. All right. So we want to find the area. And the area of the triangle is one half the base times the height. That's the easy part. The base we counted, and it was six units. So one half times six, and the height we counted, which is five. So half of six is three, and three times five is 15. Now area is always your unit of measure. You don't know what it is. Squared. Squared units. All right, that's the easy part. The problem here is because it's diagonal from H to J and diagonal from K to J, I've got to find the distance, and I can't, I can't easily count them. I've got to see um, the distance. Now, when you're given coordinates and you want to find the distance, you remember what formula you use? Think again. If I'm given coordinates and I want to find the distance between those coordinates, what formula do I use? Remember? Distance formula. The one we did on the warm up. All right. So we've got to do it twice. Fun, right? We've got to do it for point H, which is located at negative 2, 2, to point J, which is located at 3, negative 1. And then you're going to have to do it for K to J. So you've got to take your time, and sometimes problems take a little bit more than one. Remember, those are worth more, so you don't want to skip them just because they take a little bit longer to do. We're going to do the formula. Remember, that's my x and my y. They always are x, y, x and y. These are the first ones I come to. These are my second ones. And we put it into the formula. D equals the square root of x2 minus x1. Now, remember, there's a negative and a subtraction sign. What happens there? All right, it becomes a positive, so we'll fix it in just a second. My y2 minus my y1, and square that. So, we've got 3 minus a negative 2. When you have a minus and a negative side by side, you add. What's 3 plus 2? Five. Negative one minus two. Negative three and square. That's five squared. Twenty-five. That's negative three squared. Nine. Twenty-five plus nine is thirty-four. Okay. So CP class. CTP, you would be done. My CP class. You have to simplify your radical. So 34, does it have any um, common factors? And if you're not sure, you're going to have to do a little factor tree. So you got 34. What are factors of 34? Well, you know it's even, so you can do 2, 2 and 17. Okay, 2 and 17, 17 is prime, 2 is prime. You're done. You can't simplify that radical, so you're finished with it. So the distance from h to j is the square root of 34. Hold on to it. It's okay. Now we've got to find the distance from k and j. Now remember, k is located where? Is that negative 2, negative 4? And we've got j, which is located at 3, negative 1. Now, remember, we're going to have to do a whole other distance formula. The distance equals the square root. Now, let's label these so we don't get confused. This is my x1, my y1, my x2, my y2. So, x2 minus my x1. Now, minus a negative makes it a positive. I'm going to go ahead and change it so you don't get confused. Squared plus my y1 minus 
my y2 it becomes a plus minus a negative 4 becomes a plus 4. Please don't get confused on your paper. If you do, go ahead and write that step, step separately. 3 minus a negative 2. That's the only reason there's a plus there. The formula does not have a plus there. They're subtracting the difference between the x's. All right, distance here, square root. That is 5 squared. A negative 1 plus a 4 is a 3. So 3 squared. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 25 is the square root of 34. So it's an isosceles triangle because two of the sides are the same length. Okay, one's the square root of 34, the other one's the square root of 34. The other side is 6. Remember, perimeter is adding up all three sides. So you get perimeter equals 6 units plus the square root of 34 plus another square root of 34. I would take this. Um, if you um, absolutely are having trouble, that's fine. But you can simplify this a little bit more. You can pretend like the square root of 34 is an x. So you've got 6 plus x plus x. How many x's do you have? 6 plus x plus x. Right, you've got two x's. So really you've got two square roots of 34. I would take either one. This last one is the most correct. It's the most simplified. But I know when you're dealing with square roots and you haven't had algebra 2 yet, it's a little bit, uh, you're not familiar with it. Not that comfortable with it yet. But they're both correct. The last one is just the most simplified. That's your perimeter. So we did our area at the top. That was nice. It's not always that nice. Sometimes you have to use the distance formula in order to find and the height or the base. Okay, um, I'll be giving you homework. Just write this down, make sure you copy it down before the teacher turns that off. Okay, your homework is on page 55, numbers 3 through 8, 10 through 18, 20, 20, 20. Okay, do not forget, I want you to do your quiz before you do your homework. So everything off your desk, you are doing your quiz over 1.4 through 1.6. You may use a calculator. You may not use your notes. If you talk, you get a zero. Um, sorry, no one can help you on your quiz. It is by paper, so do the best that you can. Put your name on it. Make sure your class period is on it. If I don't have that, I will count off. Name, class period. Make sure you turn it in before you get out your homework. You bring it up and turn it in. If you're doing your homework before you turn it in, it will be a zero. Good luck.